for those of you who are with us here on Pro Box TV, we thank you. We guarantee you will get more than your money's worth. Who will fight Antonio Moran? Will it be Michael Dutchover or will it be Mr. St. Pete, Clarence Booth? The West Texas Warrior is just 24 years old, but Michael Dutchover is at a career crossroads as he gets set for tonight's quarterfinal fight. In his last bout, he was knocked down four times, suffering his second loss in 17 professional fights. Dutchover, if he wins, he gets back the vibe he had when he was a 13-0 prospect about to showcase his skills in a hometown coming out party on Showtime's Showbox. Lose, and he'll be written off by the skeptics as a prospect who didn't pan out. So is this Texan anxious as he readies for last chance? He told us, I live my life, win, lose, or draw. You got to get out there. You can't lay down. And he doesn't plan on doing so tonight. Mr. St. Pete, Clarence Booth comes to last chance. Holding a 21-4 record and a reputation that defines durability, Booth has snagged six straight wins. But he really needs to build some buzz and climb the rankings to get a title shot. And winning the last chance tournament would be a massive momentum boost for this decade-long pro. Our tail of the tape for this quarterfinal matchup between Clarence Booth and Michael Dutchover. 24-year-old against 34-year-old reach advantage for Mr. St. Pete, a man that I know all three of you know well, but especially Antonio Tarver training right across the bay from where you live now. St. Petersburg against Midland, Texas. Eight rounds at 140 pounds. The winner to face Antonio Moran. With the official introductions, Mark Lichtenfeld. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for our second quarterfinal bout of the Pro Box TV Last Chance 140 pound tournament. And this contest is brought to you in association with Banner Promotions and Thompson Boxing. We're scheduled for eight rounds, and your referee in charge is Christopher Young. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks. He weighed in at 138.8 pounds. With a record of 21 wins, four losses, 13 wins by knockout from St. Petersburg, Florida. Please welcome Clarence, Mr. St. Pete Boom! And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks, he weighed in at 139.8 pounds. With a record of 15 wins, two losses, 10 wins by knockout from Midland, Texas. Please welcome Michael, the West Texas Warrior Dutchover! Everything up here, I'm considered a leader. This gentleman you see me fix and dress for me. Fix, hug, clean, fight, give him a command for all time, protect yourselves all the time. Touch him up. Michael Dutchover and Clarence Booth. Dutchover is Belgian. His family name was Dutch all over. Got shortened a long time ago. His parents, Jerry and Angel. Michael is the youngest of the three brothers there. You see Mr. St. Pete, who truly has power in both hands. Who can you ready? Oh, here we go. It is time to fight. Red with the gold accent for Michael Dutchover. The blue and yellow trunks being sported by Clarence Booth. Six fight win streak for Booth. Five of those wins coming by way of knockout. Now both of these fighters are coming out very, very fast. It's gonna be eight rounds. I would love to see one of these guys get on their, on their feet, move around, use the whole ring. 
bad part about that, uh, Tony, is that neither of, these, neither of these guys are known for their moving. They're not mobile at all. Both of these guys are straightforward, straight to your head guys. They're not going to waste no time moving around. Hey, why you got? Why you guys think Gary Jonas picked them for this tournament? <laughs> <laughs> Gary, does, Gary doesn't want any runners. No runners. <laughs> he wants all action like we had in the first quarterfinal. You're a runner, a hugger, you're just a counter puncher. Don't even dial them up. Now, I will tell you this. Uh, Mr. St. Pete has been around for a minute, man. He's like a real popular fighter here locally. No one has ever said he couldn't fight. No, but it always get down to it like he won't let his hands go, but it don't look like he's having that problem tonight. No, whatsoever. I, you know what? <laughs> the word last chance should mean more to him than anybody, anybody because he's 34 years old, so this actually could be his last chance, and he's treating it right now like it may be his last chance. Both guys, well, Clarence is coming out fighting with a, a lot more urgency. You can see that. We just got to make sure he keeps it up all night. Yeah. He said it's been 10 years now. Watch I got head, this hard down pat. Said he may be a late bloomer, but I'll tell you what, now would be the perfect time for this flower to bud because he said, I am going to win this tournament. And he's been through a lot in and out of the ring. Good right hand. You both guys punch throwing some sharp punches, but nobody's changing the tempo or the speed a little bit. I like to see a, maybe a feint in between there, and maybe a drop back half step to try to lure the opponent into a trap. It's 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 pretty much Booth coming forward, trying to throw Watch punches, it, and Dutch over Watch stepping it, back, trying to throw punches, but nobody's changing the speed of what they're doing. Oh, good body right. shot. Ooh, yes. he felt that one too. Yes, he did. Dutch over, ten of his fifteen wins have been fights in which he has finished. He has finished some fights with body shots. He just ate one there, but let's keep an eye out for some body shots thrown by the man in the red trunks, Michael Dutchover. Well, what we want to see, the thing that happens, like, he just booted into a beautiful body shot, but look how long he's given him to recover from that body shot. No follow-up body shot. No follow These are the type point. of things we have to get them to understand. Right. So like when he goes look at the tape, I want him to listen to this commentary and realize that you landed a beautiful body shot. You have to follow that up or it does go good. Got you, baby. Because he connected on that body shot, right? Yes. All right. Take a deep breath. All right. Hey, remember you're jumping back again, okay? Yeah. He throws everything wide, okay? Okay. Take a deep breath. Okay. Danny Zamora, the trainer of Michael okay. Dutchel. Step with the jab, step with the jab. Just keep on going inside. You're pulling out. That's why, okay? You're throwing that overhand right. Come up with something with the hook, okay? All right, fast. But no matter what the stance is, if you sell, 2-1-2 two, two lead, pack, 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 line. We concentrate on gliding right now, all right? Don't let them know about this shit yet. They shit. Wear them down a little bit, all right? Hey, stay tight. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. Hey, stay relaxed. He's still your head. Oh. Round two. That was a very good round for both fighters, I think. A very good opening round. They both had their uh, moments, and uh, I'm looking forward to see what happens. Oh, good overhand right. Booth coming out southpaw here in round two. See, that's what I don't understand a lot of times. You had a good effect of first round. Why would you switch it? Why would you turn differently when everything was working well for you? Yeah, because if that was certain fighters, that overhand right could have ended the fight right there. And the only reason he got hit with that is because he switched, he switched. the south. Exactly. Very good point. Generally, if you're going to make that adjustment, Paulie, you do it when you really need to change something up, right? Yeah, it could be just a matter of overthinking. Again, you're, you're, you don't want to blow this opportunity. Last chance again. You can't say it enough. A little good, good shot right there. Yeah. And, by Booth. and when did he do it? When he stepped back into the orthodox stance. There's a free. Looks much more fluent for the right hand stance. Doesn't he, Roy? Let go. I was going to point out that that round was such a fast round that they would have to really check the tempo instead of burning themselves out and not having nothing left for a long fight in case both of these guys are And still maybe standing. that's Booth's way of kind of slowing the tempo down. Maybe he figures he goes south or, and Dutch over gives him a minute because he's got to look him over and then Booth can kind of take his time as well. Maybe that was a reason why he may have turned south or to slow that pace down. Who knows? I well, like now it. he's right handed. I don't like it. <laughs> Ooh, good. See how much better he does for oh, the right hand say position? I agree with it, Roy. <laughs> I just say, I'm giving it a possibility. There it is again. 
But I agree with you, Roy. That, that right hand was hitting home with exactly. the right-handed stance, exactly. and, and that was his best, one of the best punches he, he had in his and arsenal. You, and you hadn't got caught with a punch that clean all night until you turned softball. Why would you do it? Round two, fight scheduled for eight rounds. Michael Dutchover, very confident. He said, I'm a fighter, I'm here for this. He relocated from Midland, Texas, left to with his family, moved to Santa Fe Springs, California in 2016. Oh, oh. Good shot. Once again, that's South Paul stands. Yep, yep. And counter by Dutchover. He gonna learn. This is a very crucial part of my career, Dutchover said. All eight men in the tournament, Roy, is a very crucial part of their career. <laughs> you know, I was able to fight ambidextrous as well, but when I turn to right-handed, my defense slaps. Yeah. I get hit with things I ain't never got hit with, so yeah, that's and, why and, I stay south. And that's, yeah. and that's <laughs> the thing. I think a lot of guys could probably switch stances and throw punches out of both stances. You know, professional, you know, professional fighters probably can, but defensively, it's hard to stay the same, have the same effectiveness. Mm -hmm. I could do it too, but I waited until I had a guy under complete control. control right. Then I switched southpaw. I didn't go southpaw when I didn't have control oh, yeah. yet. Beautiful. And, and that's probably because Experience. defensively you're not as sharp, so you, yeah, you yeah. got him under control. He's not going to be as active anyway. So, Antonio, you're ambidextrous, and you could fight from both stances? I could fight from both stances. Only reason was because when I first started boxing, they taught me. They taught me right-handed. Really? I ain't know nothing about no southpaw. So <laughs> I didn't know you could hit in the stomach either. <laughs> and my first sparring partner dug me one deep down there. Antonio Moran, the victor in the first fight of our last chance tournament. He is watching these two men very closely. He see Clarence Booth right here in his uh, in his southpaw stance. Wham. Oh. That also could have ended the fight. That could have ended it. That's what I'm saying. I don't like those type punches right. on a guy when you don't have to take that. You're, you're not getting hit like that from the uh, orthodox yeah. stance. Why would you fight Sapper? And he was also trying to throw the right hand as he's switching the stance back. He's, he's in between stances as he's throwing the double right hand. When you're squared up, you can get, you don't want to, I don't know, even if you're a guy who's switching stances, you don't want to switch it and punch in range. Just they're digging in in close quarters now, fighting in the phone booth. Sometimes we just do too much. Yeah, overthinking. Yep. Overthinking. And, and you know that about Clarence Booth, because that's part of the scouting report. He can get a little wild and overexcited at times. Well, you know, a lot of times you got to keep your composure, and that's a learning, a learned trade as well. You got to have a lot of experience to get comfortable in that ring, and this is why practice, practice, practice make perfect. Even if they tell you you're orthodox fighter early on in your days, right? <laughs> hey, I had a heck of a left hook, though. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Back to southpaw, Roy. Yeah. I mean, you can't tell the guy how to fight his own fight. I, I ain't got to get taken nail punch from it. <laughs> it's on him, but I like him better as an orthodox in this particular fight. Yeah. Let go, Blue. There are times when the other way can work for you, but orthodox seems to be the better thing for him right now in this one. Good flurry there. Switches his stance once again after a good flurry from the orthodox side. Dutch over is, is starting, and Booth is not finishing. Nope. Dutch Ober said, I've learned a lot about life from fighting. Takes his losses like his wins. It's very humbling. It teaches you a lot about life. Life is 10% what happens to you, 90% how you react to it. Not what happens to the man, it's what the man does when it happens to him. That head, those heads are coming close too because- Very close. Yeah, yeah. move this uh, yeah. turn his south wall. Even, even the feet. Who's the holder? Watch the foot. We'd like to thank everyone who has subscribed officially now to ProBox TV. Start texting your friends, tell them how great it is. ProBoxTV.com. Join boxing's commitment to doing it right. Our commitment, ProBox, to become your boxing channel. Nice counter by Dutchover. Caught Booth off balance. And the freeze. And the freeze. 
And guys, I want to point out that just four fights ago, Dutch over was uh, 12 and 0. Yeah, wow. 13 and 0, something like that. He lost his last. I think he's two and two in his last four fights. And he's only about 24 years old, so yeah. he still he's has a bright future. This may not be his last chance. Oh, oh he got himself a good round. This oh. round. Uh oh. No, 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 no. His legs. I got you. I got you. Was that a punch? Oh, I thought I thought I thought he landed the punch. <laughs> yeah, he landed the punch. Okay. 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 What a great start to our last chance tournament. We yes, welcome man. you officially to Pro Box TV, beautiful Tampa, Florida. Later tonight, our main event of the evening for our global launch. Two-time world champion Jean Pascal against the top-ranked IBF light heavyweight contender Mong Ban Long. A light heavyweight showcase with a righty against a lefty. Holly, I have no idea why Roy and Antonio might be excited about this. <laughs> don't let him don't say. You don't you say. Right? Yeah. yeah. He see the trade. Uh, he comes in. Booth comes in and changes, and that's when he gets caught because he fell off balance once again, going from right-handed to left-handed. Something I think is not. The best thing for him at this point, you know, I don't think that's the best way to go. I think we kind of let, kind of let Dutch overtake the play from that yeah. first yeah. round. Yeah. yeah, he's letting him back into the fight. Actually, at the beginning of the second round, when he got caught with that open hand right. As soon as he turns since off. then, since then, uh, the other kid has been in control. Dutch over, yeah. Dutch over, good, yeah. Right, good right hand to the chest there by Dutch over. Work your way out of it. Work your way out of it. I'm going to be with the nine-time world the champion, front? Superman Roy Jones holder? Jr., five-time world champion, Magic Man, Antonio Tarver, Magic Man Light, two-time world champion, powerful partner, Red Paulie Molinacci. I'm not going to say Dutch has been in control, but he had more success, more success. since he's turned, since uh, Boots has turned southpaw. He had 150-plus fights as an amateur, was a runner-up in the 2016 National Golden Gloves competition. No, 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 no. Keep going to the front. Break your way out, Clint. Dutch over had a oh, oh, the good accommodation yeah. there. Dutch over had a tough night his last time out. Much to your point, Antonio. He's knocked down four times. He said, it won't be me going down tonight. Yeah, he said he wanted to prove that that was a fluke. Yep. I believe it was because you can see he's durable. He's been taking a few shots. But I don't know what that monster was. I don't know who that monster was was in front of him the yeah. last time. But he had to be on another level. Uh, 13 and 1 to hear Albright at Seminole Hard Rock Hotel Ooh. and Casino in Hollywood, Florida. We get another. Uh, these guys have have, you know have been doing saying? the same thing that I've criticized some of the other fighters tonight for. They throw everything hard. There's nothing. There's no. There's no off speed pitches here to where you you, you mix up. The confusion a little bit out and then disrupt the timing of your opponent. Both of these guys are going at it, very intense fight, but again, everything is they're throwing is hard, so it can be easily seen and timed and not get you can avoid getting hit clean by it. Well, Paul, you gotta understand though, when you're in this situation and they tell you last chance, yeah. I mean you ain't got much time to be playing yeah. around with yeah. that punch. Yeah. This might be your last chance. Yeah. Anything might end it. You understand me? Yeah. Right. So you gotta go for the gusto here. That's why Gary put it on and made it happen like that. Yeah. Make your last chance so and guys that are fighting the phone booth, you know they're trying to kill. Yeah. Yep. And that's exactly what these guys are doing. Every every shot they look at make it mean something. And that's what we saw from Antonio Moran and Jeffrey Torres in our first quarter final matchup. But what happens, happens, Texas Warrior, Paul is Mr. St. Pete. Absolutely. But, you know, the, the thing that, but what happens when you throw everything so hard is it's hard to land the clean. That's you, true. You, you, get, you get each other's timing down, so to speak. There's a good hook by Dutch over. I'm not saying what you're saying is wrong. I'm just telling you why we probably would not see it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Emotionally, it's affecting them for sure. Yeah, exactly. All right. Here you go. That double, man. Right? Breathe deep, all right? Breathe deep. Settle. Relax. Stay calm, all right? Okay. Breathe in. Where's that fifth bucket? Take some in. Hold on. Give me that fifth bucket. All right? 
Same thing. Listen, all you got to do is just keep setting them up, man. Tuck in. Now listen to me, man. Just set your combinations up, all right? Use your feet. You're doing well. All right? He clinches. You got to show him that you're there. Look that eyelid right there. Set your eyes. Take it now, peace. Not warm. There you go. All right, baby? Hey, hey. Come on. But the, the battle to meet Antonio Moran continues round five. Our first matchup went the distance. Will we have more of the same? West Texas Warrior in the red and white. Mr. St. Pete in the blue and yellow. They are giving us one heck of a fight. I tell you that. Oh, yeah, they in the phone booth for sure. How do you have it scored so far, Superman? Uh, oh, my God. I don't know. I don't think he on the round, but I think it's close to it maybe about even right now. Or just over maybe up around, but it could be pretty much even right now. I, I think it's close, but I believe that uh, Dutch over may be pulling away maybe around right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same way. You know, I had Booth start out the fight very well, but since then, Dutch over seems to have made some slight adjustments. He's using, he uses the ring well, uh, knows how to pick his spots just a little bit better, while Booth is just looking for these big shots coming forward. Not that Dutch over, like I said, hasn't thrown, he's thrown everything hard himself, but at least Dutch over is changing range at times and trying to set subtle traps. And, and then when Booth does throw that, that left hand from the southpaw stand, he's fall, he falls in with it, and he ends up conventional anyway, orthodox. Yeah. And yeah. give him a big shot like that. That's, yeah. what, that's the thing I think has given Dutch over the lead in the fight. Every time he tries to catch him between switching, he lands a big shot. And the referees, the judges are seeing that, so I'm sure they give him credit for those big shots because he's landed the most big shots all night. All night. And, and, and no, no, you, no. you guys went into this before, you know, I feel like Booth, when he's in the southpaw stance, is more hittable uh, in terms of clean shots. I mean, he takes more clean shots when he's in the southpaw stance. Or when he's switching. Yeah, or when he's switching, which... I think right now, though, this fight could be slipping away from Booth. He's going to have to turn this around and land some nice, effective shots to get uh, Dutch over's attention right now. Maybe stay orthodox, right? That might help him. But whatever he do, he got to be grounded. And, you know, he's throwing these punches, and his feet are moving at the same time. You can't generate no power from that position. And he's lucky to not have gone down getting caught between those punches, because usually when we see guys get caught switching, they usually go down because of the balance being bad. Come on, yep. Jimmy, let go. Lou, let go. Well, he's been fortunate not yeah, to have tasted the camp. Roy, if you were in the corner of Clarence Booth, you might say, if you go southpaw one more time, we're sparring when you're done here. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's you and your last chance. You're going to throw your last chance away by going southpaw, or if that's what you want to do, okay, but it's not the smartest thing to do. But you're okay with him taking it in his hands because it is his last chance. No, I don't want you taking that chance right now. I'm saying <laughs> that's, if that's how you want to do yeah. it, yeah. yeah. I can't tell you what to do, but... I wouldn't do that if Watch I were you. There you go. I can't tell you what to do, but I highly suggest you stop doing it. Exactly. We're going to head to round six. Touch over coming from those different angles. Starting to land those body shots that are on his scouting report. I listen. You can't wait there and let him come with these big left hooks. Even though they ain't doing shit, Crowd's gonna, they're gonna get the point started. So you gotta roll that shit and move out. All right? Get your body movement going. I need more curve round. All right? You get going. All right, we in six now, man. All right? All right? Yes, sir. We need to pick it up. All right? Okay? I need to stay composed, but we, we gotta dog these rounds. All right? Feel me? Okay. Time to pick it up. Stay smooth. Find your shot. You know how to set it up. Give me more body movement. Just start breaking the body now. Breaking the body. Breaking the body. Hold a high guard. Break the body. Understand? All right. Let's go. All right. Come on. You got it. You're calling for Boob to break the body down between rounds. What? All right. Let's see if that's what he attempts to do. Because Dutchover is starting to break his body down. Well, yeah, Dutchover, I was going to say, I thought Dutchover's better body shots were landing. Yeah. And Dutchover came out through the first body shot already with a jab, so we'll see. Ooh, good shot. From the right, from the orthodox yeah. dance again, though, you right know? Hand, the right hand. And as soon as he do it, where he at right now? Oh, no, punch, no punch, no punch, no punch. Clarence Booth has 
five oh. children, ages 13, 12, 11, 10, and 6. Gives a lot of love and credit to mom, Natasha. Oh. His twin brother, Terrence, is not a player. But I have stop, a feeling stop, he knows stop, how to stop, fight. Stop. Listen, listen. When I say stop, stop, you can't lean on the hip, okay? Box. Tony, you keep talking about the balance of oh, yeah. Clarence Booth, and, that, and that, that's another thing pre-fight and scouting that he, he's let go a little bit. Again, I, I mean, they're walking in the ring, and they should be galloping to keep their position. Right. Once you lose your form in the Watch ring, the it, it's and over. The you got to keep your form. That's what the judges are looking for. Break. The Break first me. person to get out of their form, they've lost, I believe, but. lost the control of the fight. And I just think Booth with all of the switching. And the one thing I see him doing consistent is when he's in close, he has some nice sharp combination. He just gotta get more of that going. And like his corner said, finish to the body. Work your way out of that. And Dutch over can be pretty light on his feet and spark with his footwork. On, I just think that. Dutch over is just being more consistent Free. with what Free. he does best. Gotcha. But more economical too. He's yeah. getting the most out of his punch. Exactly. Up next, the other side of the bracket. Kendo Tremendo, Kendo Castaneda, and Toledo, Ohio's Sonny Fredrickson. Quarterfinal number three featured here tonight. Our global launch on ProBox TV. Good in here, doesn't it? Get that camera shot. Get off. Let him go. Let him go. Come on now. Let him go. Hands are free. Six fight win streak, five by knockout. This one's going deep. They got caught again when he was in Southpaw. And again, it's also because Dutch over is able to change range a little bit. You know, Booth is kind of just in that one one gear. And Dutch over is able to kind of, you know, be a little more razzle dazzle, change range, get out of range, step around. And you Booth just follows at that same pace. You would think Booth would have a little bit more rhythm to his game. <laughs> <laughs> and why you say that, Antonio? <laughs> because I'm just saying, that's what I'm thinking. I, I think he's missing the rhythm. I, oh, he definitely is. <laughs> but I'm waiting for it too, trust me. You're telling me West Texas doesn't have rhythm? I don't yeah. know, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, West Texas has rhythm. Right? He has the rhythm. It's yeah. harder that we have a problem with. Yeah, rhythm. right. Two rounds. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio letting us know that the guys from this area of the country have some rhythm. He would know. He can't figure out why Booth is not showing that. That's what I'm talking about. Congrats, Michael. Oh, man. How you feel? Hey. You got to win these next two rounds. You got to win these two rounds. But again, when you're in a, a enormous amount of pressure like this, it makes you kind of do things out of the norm. And maybe that might be the pressure of the last chance might be wearing a little bit on these guys when they get to four, five, six, knowing that, hey, this one last chance might be slipping up yeah, my face. Yeah, and we went into that earlier in the fight, right? Emotional decisions. Sometimes these emotional moments, pressure moments, Bring out emotional decisions inside the ring from these fighters. Once again, walking and switching. Walking into it. Don't go that right. Get up the jab. Stop wrestling. Touch Stop over a stab in midsection. Go, baby. With his own jab once in a while. As well. Find that body. Oh, nice body Take shot. Take it, Midway point of round number seven. Take fight scheduled for eight. Again, he digs into the body. Michael Dutch over the West Texas Warrior. What else you see is you don't see Booth cutting the ring off. If he cut the ring off, step over to the right here, you do yourself better. He's following instead of cutting the ring off. Like right there. You got to cut that ring off. You can't follow the guy. Great observation, Roy. And, and if you keep following him like you had before, there'll be like 30, 35 seconds. No action yep. because he's following instead of cutting the ring off. Like even right now. And the South Park still follows, see? Yeah, and it allows it allows Dutch over to dictate when it's time to fight and when it's time to move. Yeah, exactly. You know, you cut off the ring, you start to dictate yourself, and you force Dutch over to fight when he doesn't want to fight, when he's looking to breathe and rest, and that can force mistakes. And Antonio Dutch over's got a little gallop going here in round seven. Yeah, he's feeling good. You know, he's feeling right now. He got control of this fight. As long as he don't get hit with nothing silly, he thinks he pretty much is in control. Good. 
Quick apology by Dutch Over. Acknowledged by Booth. Again, I see these young fighters winging those shots, man. If they only knew that if they put that and turned it straight, it'll be a more effective punch. That was a good body shot. He didn't load up, he just snapped it in there, snapped Again, 30 seconds, low on the action, because no you're following. action. Because you're following yep. Can't catch up with him if you follow him. To the punch, he's being more active, he's being more effective. I think another round like this, I think Booth's gonna need a knockout in this last round if he's gonna steal this. This round seven, we got put one yeah, more yeah, round. One more round, that's it. <laughs> he might need a knockout. <laughs> his last chance, if it be his last chance. Dutchover has been stopped only twice. His last fight that we talked about, his other loss in 2019. Last round, buddy. Last round. Both You're gonna losses, be boxing he like was stopped, but it's you been a while. The last one came against a guy who was 13 and 1. Put him together. Put him in, throw that hook. Get out. Come back with the right hand, okay? Let's go, dude. Last round. 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 Last Let's go. Let's go. Eighth and final round. Michael Dutchover, but Clarence Booth, the winner Ooh, one, to two. face Antonio Moran. Oh, Dutchover landed about three or four sharp shots. Out of oh, the out eighth of, round. Out of the South Pole stance. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Now, Booth just landed a good right hand out of the North South stance. He did. No, 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 no. I just don't know what he's trying to accomplish out of the softball stance. We haven't seen him do anything positive effective. Nothing. or effective Nothing. yet. Except get hit. Uh, yeah. Antonio, you think the Booth needs to finish Dutch over right here to win this fight? Well, it seems like he's definitely behind on the cards, if you're asking me. Um, I just think he needs to land some significant to turn this fight around, maybe a knockdown. Right. I agree. Yeah. Again, following him. He'll never catch up if he just keep moving around. Yeah. <laughs> There's a free. Watch your wet clip. Polly, you have the scorecards leading Best towards touch over as well. Let go. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, I got Booth needed a knockout. And and Booth is one of those guys, man, you, you really want to root for. You, you know, he's do. had it hard. Oh, you should man. do. He's recovered. He's came back after, you know, unfortunately being shot up and everything in yep. St. Pete. Both arms and so, yeah, both legs and the elbow. It's a miracle that he's in here competing with all of his heart right now. Watch what clips in After, which was a, a misidentified shooting when the car rolled by, the doctor, Antonio, told him to find another profession. And Clarence Booth said, no, not gonna happen. A year of rehab, back to boxing, you're absolutely right. I mean, you, you wanna talk about out. heart, you yeah. gotta give him love. I just wish he would've stayed orthodox tonight. I would like to see what would've happened had he stayed in the orthodox position all night tonight. But he hasn't Again. been able, but it's another thing you mentioned, Roy, last round, he's not cutting off the ring. You know, he hasn't been able to really track Dutch over down the way he's needed to, uh, regardless of the stance. I mean, we've been in the southpaw stance, got him hit more, but his ability to track down Dutch over has been a problem because he's just kind of just plods along and, 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 and like Antonio said, no galloping, just kind of moving along and, and Dutch over has free reign to circle the ring and box the way he wants to. 30 seconds remain. 
Dutch over looking for the uppercut in this eighth and final round. Just missed it a moment ago. That uppercut has been there all night as well. But tell you what, all five, four of our fighters have shown that they do want it. And they Absolutely. did treat this like the last yes, chance. Oh. And I have a feeling the next four are gonna do exactly <laughs> the same run. <laughs> they go the distance. Can somebody say Dutch over Moran? Because <laughs> it's coming. Yep. And as I said, the family name was shortened from Dutch all over, and Dutch all over was showcased <laughs> against Mr. St. Pete in he more was, than one he round. He was. Yep. He was all over. Once again, though, good fighter, great fight. Got to love. What's up? Good job, Judges rendering their decision. We have the West Texas Warrior. Or will Mr. St. Pete meet Antonio Tono Moran in the semifinal? <laughs> this is just like a right for the group just one. a grueling 90 seconds hey, waiting for that decision to come in, isn't it? Man, it's the worst thing ever. Especially when it takes this long, uh -oh. you, you wonder if something bad might happen because of how long it's taking. Uh -huh. I mean, I'll never forget that time in the Seoul Olympics. Yep. They kept waiting. I was like, oh, gosh, they didn't get me. And sure enough, they, got they had to get me. <laughs> uh, and it is in after the wait. And here, once again, is Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight well-executed rounds, we go to the scorecards. Joanne Richards scores the bout 78-74, Dutch over. James O'Connor sees it 77-75, Booth. And Tito Wilgo scores the bout 77-75 for your winner by split decision, Michael West Texas Warriors. You were you were right on though with that long wait. You yeah. were right on. I told you, I told you, when you, see, when you hear wait that long, believe me, the foolishness is in play. Trust me. <laughs> what a fight in this. We talked about losers bracket would be just fine. Michael Dutchover by split decision. Defeats Clarence Booth in quarterfinal. Number two. And he see, you know, Booth, he, in that south part position, wham, that was the overhand right that started everything for Dutch Over. And it's crazy because from that point forward, Dutch Over seemed to land a harder punches all night because he just realized that from that, from that right here, that switch, you see him get caught right there. Every time he switched up, it happened to him because, like Travis just said, he's off balance on the switches and he gives up big shots. Right there, that was from the right hand stand, but it didn't land clean. And he actually landed some good shots right there because he's in the right-hand orthodox stance. So for me, I just feel like the southpaw stance or any switching kind of hurt him tonight. So one side is complete. It will be Dutchover and Moran in the semifinals. The next two quarterfinal matchups are coming up next. Let's get to Pauli Malinaji with the victor, the West Texas Warrior by split decision. The winner, Michael Dutchover, con el ganador, 
the Michael Dutch over split decision on that on a decision dividida. What did you what did you think of the fight after uh, after the uh, the quick, the quick start uh, Booth had? Uh, sabemos que Booth uh, comenzó la pelea uh, con mucha rapid rapidez. Uh, ¿Cómo cómo cómo cambiaste la, el plan como cuando la pelea continuó? Booth, Booth started fast and. And I'm not really used to it. I think he knew that because he has more fights than me, more experience. But, you know, that, that's what this sport's about, you know, is learning. And I feel like I had to push through the, in the second half, and that's what I did. Comenzó Booth uh, rápido la pelea, la pelea pero yo uh, pone mi ajustamientos y, y ganamos la pelea. We have your next opponent here, Antonio Moran. Uh, what did you think of his fight? Were you able to pay attention to it? Yeah, you know, I'm a fan of boxing, so I was in the back room just watching his fight. His fight was very good. I think this whole tournament speaks of the good talent that they have, and these are all going to be great fights. So I'm looking forward to facing Maron in my next fight. Le, le pregunté qué pensó de la pelea de Morán. Le, le, me decía que es un fanático de boxeo y le gustó la, la pelea de, de Morán y, y eh, va a ver, lo, lo va a ver en la próxima pelea. Antonio, una buena pelea. Ahora está enfrente en tu, en tu oponente en la semifinal, uh, Michael Dutch over a good, a good quarterfinal match. You, you have, you're now in front of your uh, semifinal opponent, Michael Dutch over. Let's talk about your quarterfinal fight first. Para hablamos un poquito de, de tu pelea de, en los cuartos de final. Eh, tiene mucha experiencia. Eh, tu oponente no tenía la experiencia tuya. ¿Cómo, la, ¿Cómo usaste tu experiencia para ganar la pelea? How did you use your experience, your superior experience over, over Perez to uh, uh, win your fight? Eh, fue lo que me ayudó en los últimos rounds. Vi que este Jeffrey se, se empezó a cansar, entonces empezamos a, a, a meter ahí la experiencia, ¿no? a presionar, a, a tirar más golpes, a, a puntear más los, los últimos rounds y pues gracias a Dios nos, nos salieron las cosas bien. Yeah, he said, uh, basically, he explained that his experience worked well with him in the late rounds. He worked, he worked them hard. He, he broke them down in the late rounds, and uh, he was able to throw more punches. And he said, thanks to God, we, uh, we got the victory. Okay, it's not in front of Dutch over. What do you think about the fight of Dutch over? Felicitarlo, muchas felicidades, hermano. Y pues, a trabajar. Hay que, hay que, hay que seguir trabajando para, para la siguiente pelea. Y pues, vamos a, a darle, no hay de otra. He congratulated Dutch over and said we have a lot of work to do to get ready, and uh, we'll see him in the semifinals. Gracias a, lo, a los dos, a vosotros, y nos vimos en las semifinales. Thanks to both of you, and we'll see you in the semifinals.